I think the most jarring thing for me is the look of fear that they have. There's just an incredible amount of fear. That's Yvonne Denmark. She's talking about coronavirus patients who she's ministering to in New York City. A patient has to call for a chaplain. They want someone to sit with them and hold their hand, to listen to them as to why they're going through what they're going through. And as we're doing that, I'm praying that the Lord would put in their hearts that they need prayer or they want to know more about Jesus. I love for your presence. I love for your healing touch. Yvonne Denmark and her husband Tim are serving as chaplains with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team in New York City. And there are guests on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories, an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Jim Kirkland, recording at the studios of Blue Ridge Broadcasting in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm Phil Fleischman, recording from home. Yes, we are still in separate locations because of COVID-19. And since we're mentioning locations, you should know that we spoke to Yvonne and Tim over the phone before they began their day at the Samaritan's Purse Field Hospital in Central Park. So the phone line might not sound perfect all the time. You might hear some background noises like cars or wind or generators running, as well as people walking around. But you might be wondering, why all that sound? What is a field hospital and why is it in Central Park? And what exactly are Tim and Yvonne doing there as chaplains? You're going to learn all about it in this episode, plus some encouragement from Billy Graham. Don't let the headlines frighten you. Yes, we're living at a crisis period, but God is with us in the midst of the grief. In the midst of the suffering, God is there. It's true. During suffering and crisis, Jesus is waiting for you to turn to him. Do you want to know more? Well, we're here for you. You can give us a call on our 24-hour prayer line. The number is 888 388 2683. That's 888-388-2683. Or you can go to our website. The address is billygram.org. Both of those are listed in the show notes, by the way. GPS. God. People. Stories. Well, I grew up in New York City. I actually came here to New York in fourth grade from Puerto Rico. So I lived in the Bronx uh, until after college. I grew up outside of the city uh, in, in a, a suburb of the city, about an hour away, Mayapak. Both Tim and Yvonne Denmark put their faith in God early on in their lives. I grew up in church. Um, I made a decision for Christ. I guess when I was a early teens at a Christian summer camp that I used to go to every summer. I accepted the Lord as a young child of first grade. My mom didn't know the Lord and... Um, My dad did. So I would go to the church on Sunday and was able to help my mom understand that God loves her. And it was in church that Yvonne and Tim first met each other in their 20s. They got married in 1987 and lived in Ossining, another town near New York City. Soon after that, the Denmarks started having kids and Tim went to work in law enforcement. I worked for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority police. They're headquartered in New York and they work all throughout the region. But I spent a lot of years in New York and Manhattan and in the Bronx. From a young kid, that's all I wanted to do was be a cop. And so when I finally you know, got that opportunity, I loved it. But working as a police officer took a toll on Tim's mental and spiritual health, as well as on the Denmark's marriage. A lot of officers go through a dark time of where they, they don't like the public because they deal day in and day out with the worst of people. They kind of retreat within their own community and and don't mix and would prefer not to be around other people, just police officers, which is not healthy because then those, all of those negative feelings just get reinforced. Um, So because I was working long hours and, and working weekends, working Sundays, you know, I wasn't in church a lot, you know, and I wasn't spending time in the word, you know, we went through a struggle in our marriage there for a while. Being married, a police officer's wife really carries the family. And there were many times when he's working 16-hour days or more when I felt very much like a single mom. And I really had to depend on the Lord that he was my husband at that time. 
those dark times, you know, I didn't doubt God. I, I didn't doubt that God would see us through. That faith in God was what carried Yvonne when Tim was injured in the line of duty in the early 90s. We were in church one Tuesday night for prayer, and the police car came over, and he had been in, a, in an arrest situation, in an altercation, and he got pushed off the platform, which is on a train, and onto train tracks, and got hurt. Not seriously, but, you know, it was a, it was a time when I was there, the police come to tell you that, that your husband got hurt, and I was there saying, okay, Lord. I know you're going to be with him and I know you're going to be with us. And to have to tell the kids that daddy got hurt a little bit and he's going to need some time to heal was hard. But if it wasn't for brothers and sisters in Christ that supported us, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, it's God. It's God. Only God can take care of this. Tim recovered from his injuries, but the Denmarks still struggled for the next few years to balance all the different areas of life. Finally, though, Tim got to the point where he realized he needed to fully surrender both his marriage and his law enforcement job to Jesus Christ. When you come to the end of yourself is when you cry out for God. And for me, that's what happened. And that really changed, changed our lives completely. God was merciful. I was able to work through that and come to a place where you started treating people differently because of the Lord. Tim retired after 29 years on the police force, and Yvonne retired after three decades as a school teacher. Today, the Denmark serve as chaplains with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team, or RRT. The RRT trains and deploys chaplains to help with people's spiritual and emotional needs following natural and man-made disasters. Right now, a big part of the Rapid Response Team's focus is COVID-19. The RRT is working with our sister ministry, Samaritan's Purse, as they provide medical care at an emergency field hospital in the East Meadow of Central Park. And that is where Tim and Yvonne have been serving the past few weeks. The hospital is actually bordered on the east side by Fifth Avenue, and then the rest of the park surrounds it. The trees are starting to bud. The tulips are out. So it's a beautiful sight. The hospital itself, all, all the tents there, you know, we're right across the street from Mount Sinai Hospital. So on the one side, you've got the, the structure building of Mount Sinai Hospital. And then across the street in the park, you have all the tents set up for the field hospital. Doctors and nurses from Samaritan's Purse have partnered with Mount Sinai Hospital to help treat overflow coronavirus patients. But don't let the words tent or field hospital fool you. All the patients are receiving top-notch medical care. It kind of looks like what a regular emergency room would look like. Beds along each side with space between each um, patient. Uh, they have their diagnostic machines needed for them. It's temperature controlled. Uh, the nurses have a little station there where they can do their work. Patients are talking to each other, encouraging each other. You know, so that's, uh, it's actually very peaceful in there. It's not at all a chaotic scene. Since they're not healthcare workers, Tim and Yvonne only talk to the patients in the field hospital if someone specifically asks for a chaplain. A patient has to call for a chaplain. Um, so if a patient calls for a chaplain, it's because they want that ministry of presence there. They want someone, whether it's to sit with them and hold their hand, whether it's to listen to them as to why they're going through what they're going through. And as we're doing that, I'm praying that the Lord would put in their hearts that they need prayer or they want to know more about Jesus. And then that's, you know, that's what happens. And that's what I've been doing. As with every rapid response team deployment, Tim and Yvonne stay ready to talk about spiritual matters, things like life and death and God, etc., if the patient leads the conversation in that direction. Otherwise, Tim and Yvonne stay busy throughout the day sharing the love of Jesus with the doctors and nurses. We do pray the nurses and the doctors in as they're getting suited up because they're wearing their scrubs, they're wearing personal protective equipment, which includes boots, a plastic jumpsuit, gloves, a hair net, you know, a hat, a net, and uh, some type of facial shield as well as masks. So we don't stop them as they're getting dressed. We pray with them as they're getting dressed that God would give them a wisdom on how to deal with the patients. God would give them stamina because they're working long hours and that God would just have, allow that area that they're working with to be flooded with peace. 
we try and stay around the the area where the staff comes out to eat during the middle of the day because that's when they're coming out uh, for their break. So we kind of stay around there just to be available um, to listen and just, hey, how you holding up? And, you know, Vaughn's been able to minister to a couple of the nurses, you know, who, who came out and, and just were a little emotional just for that moment get it out, have somebody to talk to and, and just kind of encourage them so that they can suit back up and go back in. And there's plenty of opportunities for ministry outside the hospital too. Tim and I start our day with walking the perimeter of the park and praying. We do a prayer walk. Tim has been able to make relationships with the law enforcement officers that are on the perimeter and with the security guards, and he can explain that. I've had people from the community come up to me and say, oh, Billy Graham, we saw him in Central Park years ago. We absolutely love him. And we just asked them how they're holding up, listen to their story if they have a story. They're very thankful for us. Some of them get emotional. They'll ask what a chaplain does and we'll say, well, we're here to listen to you. We're here to comfort you. Um, If you need prayer, we're more than willing to do that. And sometimes they do ask us for prayer. The cops that, that I've spoken to, you know, we, we ask them, you know, how, how are you holding up? How's everything at home? How's your family? Because the family's worried. Um, we have been able to pray with some of the officers. We pray with them and tell them, God has not forgotten you. God knows you by name. You know, we just speak those words of encouragement over them. And we ask that he protect them. Tim and Yvonne Denmark aren't the only ones offering encouragement near the Samaritan Spurs Field Hospital. Some children had come and and hung pictures on the fence that they had drawn. Thank you. Thank you for healing people. Thank you for helping people. So we happened to be walking. We happened to be doing our walk when we passed these families doing that. And we said, do you mind if we bring them in to the hospital to show the staff that it would really, really boost their morale? And it did. They were so happy. Every night at 7 o'clock, people stop and they start applauding the healthcare workers. So here in the park, they'll come and they stand around the perimeter of the camp, just clapping their hands and shouting and ringing bells. And that really, the staff, they just love that. They just, they wave back. And it's really been awesome to see that. It's clear that God is moving in some amazing ways right now in New York City. The Samaritan's Purse medical teams are working to bring healing to coronavirus patients. And chaplains like Tim and Yvonne are getting to share God's love. It's all about the patients. And it's also all about supporting the medical staff that's there. Now, recently I have had the opportunity to minister to families at the gate who have um, family members there, been able to walk in with families and pray with them and comfort them. But, you know, everyone is in different stages. Some are in the early stages and they, they're okay. We clap them out when they leave. You know, we make a big deal when they've been able to come out and, and feel better. Some are, are in stages where I think the most jarring thing for me is the look of fear that they have. There's just an incredible amount of fear because they don't know what this disease is doing to their bodies. That fear was very evident to Yvonne when she recently sat down with a patient who called for a chaplain. The patient told Yvonne that it felt like their body was betraying them. And so I spoke to him and said, you know, our bodies are temporal. They're not forever. I said, but but we have a chance to have a new body if we want. And then I had asked him, you know, if he knew Jesus. You know, and I thought that it was okay because he asked me to come in. So I I asked if he knew Jesus and he said, oh, yeah, he knew Jesus. And I said, well, did you have you ever had an opportunity to ask him to forgive you of your sins so you can have a relationship? And he said, no, he did not. So I then uh, spoke to him about how, you know, God sent his son to die for him and to take his sins away if he wanted that. And I let him absorb that a little bit. And then I asked him if he wanted to pray. And he said, yes. So we pray that the Lord would forgive his sins and he would be able to have a relationship with God. The next day, by request, Yvonne was able to give that patient a Bible and explain more about what it meant to live as a follower of Jesus Christ. 
In all that's happening right now, Yvonne's prayer is that each and every person she's interacted with would come to have real hope and real security, the kind that can only come from knowing God personally. We need to pray that these seeds have been planted, that the Lord would send somebody to water them and that there would be somebody ready for the harvest. Right now, the churches are not open, they're not available, but that doesn't mean that God can't use something to bring them in. So we, I pray that the people who have seen this ministry, who have come and asked questions, that that little seed has been planted and that the Lord would send someone to reap the harvest, because that's what's really needed. God has not forgotten you. God knows your name. He loves you. Those truths changed Tim and Yvonne Denmark's lives. And that's the message they're sharing in New York City during these uncertain times. Do you know that Jesus loves you too? Do you know that you can have a relationship with him that brings peace and even joy during a pandemic? There's more about it at findpeacewithgod.net. You can go there right now findpeacewithgod.net. And remember, if you would like to talk to someone about this or have someone pray with you, call our 24-hour prayer line. The number is 888-388-2683. In just a minute, you're going to hear Tim and Yvonne explain why they are so excited about where, when, and how they're serving. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories a production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Don't let the headlines frighten you. Yes, we're living at a crisis period, but God is with us in the midst of the grief. In the midst of the suffering, God is there. Billy Graham. Oh God, we don't understand it all, but we believe you are the great and the mighty God. God, I believe, I trust in you, even if I don't understand. God still loves And he loves with such an everlasting love that he gave his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for you. And if it were not for that, there is no hope in the world. And those of us that follow him and serve him have a future that's brighter than tomorrow. No matter what God has in store for us and for our world, let us be found faithful. It is our glorious task to give hope through the message of the cross and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, who came to bring peace in a broken world. Jesus came to bring peace in a broken world. What a true and timely reminder there from Billy Graham. Our guests in this episode of GPS are following Jesus' example and doing their part to bring peace in the midst of the brokenness our world is facing today. Tim and Yvonne Denmark just became volunteer chaplains with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team earlier this year. And being in New York City at the field hospital is their first ever deployment. We asked them how they were holding up. God just puts you in places and prepares you to do things that you never you never thought. This is such a different deployment working with an infectious disease that uh, I didn't really think that we would be selected. But when we were, I was like, wow, this is awesome. God's been good to us. And every morning we wake up uh, ready Ready to to see what, you know, ready, kind of ready to see who's God going to introduce us to today. Who are we going to meet? And who are we going to be able to minister to? We want to say a huge thank you to Tim and Yvonne Denmark for their service at the Samaritan's Purse COVID-19 Field Hospital in New York City. We also want to thank them for taking the time to tell us about their ministry there with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team. Would you be praying for their continued work on the front lines? You can learn more about what the Rapid Response Team is doing by finding them on Facebook. Just search for Billy Graham Rapid Response Team. There's also a link in the show notes. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. Thank you so much for listening. GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Oh.